All right, we are now live on Facebook, just so everyone knows. And uh, the next step is that we are going to uh, have our, our web guy, Kai, put the um, live stream from Facebook up on our website at makingbib.us. So that'll take just a minute here. <clears throat> All right, so that embed code has been sent. To anyone watching on Facebook, we are back from an executive session that was part of the pre-commission meeting. We are currently waiting for this live stream to be up and running on our website, makingbib.us, so those without Facebook can also watch the meeting. Um, if y'all will just hang with us, we will be uh, resuming the meeting in just a few moments. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is Rachel Gamble with Public Affairs again, just double checking our audio for the stream at makeandbib.us. We are currently live on Facebook. Uh, we will be resuming the meeting momentarily. Thank you. Sure. All right. I understand we're now uh, streaming live on the website as well as uh, uh, Facebook. So uh, uh, let me uh, uh, announce then that uh, following the executive session, and I apologize that it took us longer to get through the executive session than I had hoped. So I apologize for that. But uh, no further action being necessary by the commission following the executive session, uh, I'll declare that meeting adjourned. Uh, and then uh, try to convene at this point the public hearing uh, that was supposed to start at six o'clock. For, so for those people that are tuning in and, and wondering what in the world's going on with the public hearing, uh, this is the public hearing, the second of three public hearings uh, that we are required to have in connection uh, with our decision of the millage rate, whether to maintain a constant millage rate, the same millage rate that we had last year, or whether to adopt the rollback millage rate because of an increase that we realized uh, in the tax base. Michael, I think you were going to lead us uh, in, in that discussion. We have solicited uh, in, uh, input and comments by email uh, as, as well as uh, other modes of communication. And I understand you've got several to share with us tonight. Correct, Mayor. Since the um, hearing this morning at 10, we've received four additional comments. And so I'll, I'll read those now. Um, the first one came from Daryl Wolf, and uh, Daryl writes, Commissioners, what is the purpose of raising property taxes with nothing to show for it? Are you raising it for the sake of raising it? There is no reason for it. Where is all the money gone? It hasn't come back to the community. Has it gone to the, uh, has it gone to the paid government jobs? Seems like it. That was from Daryl Wolf. Um, the next comment comes from Jody Burton. Jody writes, um, Dear Mr. Mayor and Commissioners, shame on you. First, you send the assessors out, which raised my property value by $70,000. Yes, $70,000. And now on top of that, you have the nerve to raise the millage rate as if the extra money it will cost me from the property value raise wasn't enough. Don't you know we're in the middle of a pandemic? 
Many people have lost their jobs or had their hours cut, and you want to bleed us on top of that. I will make sure to express my disapproval in the voting booth, and I will raise my voice enough to make sure my friends and neighbors do the same. Shame on you. Signed, Jody Burden, District 6. Um, the third comment we received was from Nicole Woods. Nicole writes, um, my comment is against the approval of yet another millage rate increase. I am against this increase because not only were we previously told on July 27th that the millage rate was likely to remain the same due to increased property values compensating for the needed increased revenue, but I also believe that until the commission can show that their interests are more aligned with the public's need, that they should ask no more of the public than what they already receive. We have 36 homicides so far this year but the majority of the commission seems to think it's more important to move some old rocks that have been sitting in the same place for over a hundred years than to source what resources they can to assist law enforcement. We had $16,283 left over out of the FY21 budget that Mr. Mayor, uh, Mayor Rickard is sponsoring to have transferred to the salary of a single county employee instead of investing it where other budgets fall short. Asking for more money from the taxpayers of Macon Bibb is like having $500 in your savings account and claiming you can't afford to pay your $100 utility bill because your checking account has $50 in it. We're already paying significantly more in taxes than surrounding areas, and we seemingly have less representation than we ever have. Most of the elected officials sitting at this meeting have been ignoring public outcry, and Mayor Rickard has done everything he can to silence that outcry. I personally don't feel like spending another red cent on Macon Bibb until the commission and the mayor show us that they've responsibly exhausted the funds that they already received. That was from Nicole Woods. The final comment we received came from Tim Spyshock. And Tim writes, um, I would like to take this opportunity to endorse the county keeping millage rate at the level it is currently at, effectively raising property taxes. I live near downtown in a house on which my wife and I pay property taxes to the county. There are many problems that Macon is currently facing from crime to blight to public education shortfalls. And these things will all take money to change for the better. Rolling back the rate will take money away from many necessary areas and many of the most hard hit will be those who don't even own property. Also Macon's property taxes are low compared to other places I've lived, which leads me to believe that there should be some room for growth here. Thank you, signed Tim Spyshock. Uh, Mr. Mayor, that concludes the public comments that we received for the, the 6 p.m. hearing. Um, we will have one more public hearing on the millage rate uh, next Tuesday, August 11th at 1 p.m. And that's immediately following the, um, or that's, that's immediately preceding the special called meeting um, at which the vote on the millage rate will, will occur. And um, if anyone that's, that's listening from the public has any comments, they can send them in either go to our website at makeandbib.us and there's a form online that you can fill in your comments and submit them, or you can email them to commission at makeandbib.us and um, they'll be received in red for next week. Good, uh, and uh, the meeting next week, will of course have committee meetings and I'll go over this again momentarily. Committee meetings starting at nine o'clock by Zoom uh, and then hopefully we'll be through with the committee meetings in time to have this uh, one o'clock public hearing and then immediately following the public hearing, the third and final, we'll have a special call meeting of the Macon Bibb County Commission to adopt a millage rate. Um, the, the last thing I'll say for the public hearing uh, is that today's newspaper uh, uh, had a, a, an article on page one on the front page of the Macon Telegraph um, that the title of it was Macon Bibb might offset fiscal hit due to virus with tax windfall. Uh, so I cut that out and, and, and uh, I gave it to the clerk, and I would like for it to be incorporated into the comments that we received. And you may want to take a look at it either online or if you got the paper this morning, look at it. It starts on, on page one and, and carries over to page two. But I think it's got some good comments, uh, both pro and con, about the, the need for additional money to hire additional public safety people and that we're all just talking about, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, I, that's good public information to have in the record as well. Uh, anything further from the commissioners uh, uh, before we adjourn this second of the three? Uh, Commissioner Jones, got, got you, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. It's, it's unfortunate that we have to legally 
call this a tax increase because that's amen 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 I, I couldn't agree with you more unfortunate is right because it's not we're holding the millage rate the same go ahead sir. Uh, okay so it's a it's a misnomer we are holding if we vote that way to, to keep the course on the 20.331 the public also doesn't realize that that from, from the tax assessor's office Every three years, they're mandated by law to reassess or revalue property. So they typically do proportionally a third each year to come up with a value. Your value could stay the same. It could go down. It could go up. So those people whose values went up, and if, if their value was 150 before and it's now 200000 then you, based on that, you're amount of taxes you pay goes up based on the assessed the new assessed value so we are not raising taxes we if we keep the 20.331 which i'm in favor of we're simply maintaining course sure. any other comments from commissioners yeah i i want to uh, say a similar thing that that we got blamed for for this being a tax increase of course we don't go out and assess properties as Commissioner Jones just said that's the tax assessor's job, and and if you didn't get a tax increase, or, I mean, excuse me, an, in, an assessment increase, your taxes won't go up, is my understanding. So I think this whole thing is a big, big misunderstanding when they're saying that we're going to raise the millage rate from twenty point three three one and raise property taxes. It's just a misunderstanding, and people, it's a hard one to to explain to people, honestly. It is. It Understanding, but we're very doing, good. Any other any other comments from? Actually, we're doing good because our property values have gone up in some areas, and we've gotten new properties, and, and that's a good sign for making. That's a good. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Uh, any other comments? If not, then I'll uh, declare this public hearing adjourn uh, and move immediately uh, into the uh, regular Macon Bibb County uh, Commission meeting. So. Let me uh, call us to order uh, now as we convene uh, for this Tuesday, August the 4th, uh, a regular commission meeting of the Macon Bibb County Commission. Um, and I'd like to start uh, the meeting tonight uh, with calling on Commissioner Valerie Wynn to, to lead us uh, in prayer, give us an invocation. Uh, Commissioner Wynn, would you lead us in prayer, please, ma'am? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let us bow our heads, please. Our Heavenly Father, we are indeed blessed tonight with our health and our lives, as we know many have not been as fortunate. Father, as a country and as our community, we are faced with so many challenges, such as COVID-19, crime, food insecurities, job losses. In spite of these challenges, Father, we have also been very fortunate in other respects as compares to other areas of our country with fires on the West Coast and um, our hurricane going up the East Coast and riots and destructions all over the country. I just want to say, Father, we are very thankful to our community for peaceful protest and peaceful gatherings and our community helping one another versus opposing one another. Thank you for a community that's doing the right thing. As our leaders in this community, we have to make a difference and our opinions are different and our thoughts are different. But Father, we'd ask that you guide us in our discussions, discussions and decisions to make appropriate and well thought out outcomes for our community. Father, we also ask that you look over our schools and our children because there are some schools are already going back and some will be going back very soon. We ask that you bless and guide the administrators, the staff, the teachers as they look over our children for their own health and for their children's health because this is something that's very important to our community. Um, I just wanted to ask our father to do a very special blessing, please, for one of our own, Janice Ross and her husband, Craig, as they go through a very difficult time in their lives. Please bless them. And again, thank you, Father, our dearest Lord, for many blessings that we have. In thy name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you, Commissioner Wynn. Uh, next item on our agenda, uh, approval of the minutes. Minutes have been prepared and circulated. Uh, so if there are any changes or corrections, let me know. Otherwise, I need a motion to approve the minutes of the pre-commission meeting of July 21st and the regular commission meeting of July the 21st. Uh, got a motion, by, got a motion by Wynn, second by Schlesinger is the way I think I heard it. Uh, yeah. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approval of the minutes signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say no. The ayes have it and the minutes are approved. 
that takes us now to uh, a report from our standing committees. Uh, and uh, the first uh, committee to report is operations and finance. And, and that report will be given to us by Chairman Watkins. Chairman Watkins. You may, have to un you may have to unmute yourself. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Come on, come back to me. No, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll be glad to do that. Uh, Economic and Community Development uh, did not have a meeting. Uh, no, we we no pulled report. the one agenda. We pulled the one agenda item that was referred to it. So we'll do yes, better, Chairman Luke. All right, we'll do, we'll, yes, we'll do better. All right. So so we'll go then to public safety. <laughs> And Thank Public you. Safety Committee Chairman Wynn, will you Thank give you. us that report? Yes, sir. Uh, the Public Safety Committee met on July 28th, 2020 and heard a report from Greg Brown, who is the chairman of the Pedestrian Review Board. And uh, He and a lot of other people in our community have gotten together by Zoom. They haven't gone, been able to meet in person, but he brought us up to date on the recent work of the board to make Macon Big County more pedestrian friendly. Um, and I'm, I'm very happy to report some more good news because it's important to note that in 2020, there's only one, been one pedestrian death. And I sure hope I don't jinx that, but I hope we have no more for the rest of the year. That was our only order of business. And with that, this concludes the report of the Public Safety Committee. Good, thank you, Chairman Wynn. Uh, Facilities and Engineering Committee, uh, that report will be given to us by Chairman Jones. Chairman Jones? Yes, sir, can you hear me? Yes, sir, go ahead. Facilities and Engineering, we also met on July the 28th, took the following action. The committee heard a report from Todd Road with Peachtree Recovery Services. Uh, this has to do with uh, facilities that were injured uh, by auto accidents and whatnot. Uh, within our county, Mr. Road reported there were a total of 369 claims since the contract was signed in April of 2019, 85 claims have been paid with a total of $143,405 paid. There are 88 claims that are pending in addition to that. That concludes the report of facilities and engineering. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman Jones. Uh, now back to uh, operations and finance, Chairman Watkins. Thank you for that, sir. The Operations and Finance Committee met on July the 28th and the following items were approved. An acceptance of a grant from the U.S. Tennis Association in the amount of $30,000 to use for the John Drew Tennis Center and an additional grant of $30,000 for the Build It Forward grant for the U.S. Tennis Association also at the John Drew Tennis Center. Uh, chapter 19 of the code was amended for the purpose of authorizing the non-competitive purchase of dirt as a commodity. Uh, the committee approved the following supplemental appropriations. We approved $16,283 to fund salary increase, a salary increase for the chief deputy clerk um, in Superior Court. And the committee also heard an update on right-of-way maintenance and information technology projects. This concludes the report of the Operations and Finance Committee. Uh, good, thank you, uh, Chairman Watkins. Uh, the next item on our agenda uh, then is uh, the, the consent agenda. And as we discussed it briefly uh, at pre-commission, there are eight uh, items, uh, eight alcohol license applications uh, that have been submitted. Uh, each of these uh, uh, applications uh, is accompanied by all of the requisite uh, information and material that is required. Um, that is a, a certificate by the sheriff of a satisfactory background check of the applicant, uh, a certification by business development services of the appropriate fees being paid for the type of alcoholic beverage uh, to be sold or dispensed, a certificate from planning and zoning uh, to indicate that the zoning is appropriate uh, for the uh, sale of alcohol at the place and measurement forms from the county engineer to certify that the that the location meets uh, and complies with all of the distance requirements to, to public schools and college campuses and uh, public libraries etc and the copy of the ad that ran in the, the Macon Telegraph to notify everybody uh, so the licenses as I say there are seven of them uh, that uh, 
uh, are to be approved and one comes with the recommendation from the attorney's office uh, that I'll get him to elaborate on that uh, about uh, the lapse of the license and the proximity to a school. Uh, those uh, other seven uh, uh, had a, a license application uh, from the Shri Ganache 2020 LLC doing business as the Welcome Food located at 6999 Knoxville Road in Lizella. Uh, this is a change of ownership. Uh, it is an existing convenience store with fuel sales and alcohol package to go. The application is for beer and wine package sales to go at that location. Uh, the second uh, is a new uh, alcohol license, new, a new location it is the new Enmark station located at 3311 Mercy University Drive. So this is a new location. It is for beer and wine package sales to go at that Enmark uh, station, 3311 Mercy University. Uh, item uh, C is a um, Friends Group 2020 LLC doing business uh, as AK Express at 1091 Clinton Road. Uh, it is a change of ownership. It's an existing convenience store with fuel and alcohol package sales to go. Uh, this application is for beer and wine package sales to go at that location, 1091 uh, Clinton Road. The next uh, is uh, item D, and it is uh, license applications from JR Food and Gas Incorporated, located at 1803 Pinona Avenue. Um, that's the one where the attorney's office is recommending that we deny it because of the lapse of the grandfather status and proximity to school. So I'll come back to that momentarily. Item E is a new alcohol license uh, for the Society Garden located at 2389 Ingleside Avenue. Um, they have had an existing beer and wine consumed on the premises license. They wish to add uh, alcohol, liquor mixed drinks uh, to be consumed on the premises at that location. So an existing beer and wine license, now they're going to add uh, liquor mixed drinks uh, consumed on the premises. Uh, item F uh, is Macon King's LLC doing business as King's Food Mart, located at 2765 Houston Avenue. That also is a change of ownership. It's an existing convenience store with fuel sales and alcohol package sales to go. The application is again for beer and wine package sales to go at that location. Item G is a new alcohol business license from Lai Guruji. LLC doing business as Forest Hill Shell located at 1585 Forest Hill Road. That also is a change of ownership. It's an existing convenience store with fuel and alcohol package sales to go already licensed there. And it again is for beer and wine package sales to go. Uh, the, uh, the next is item H. Uh, it is a new uh, alcohol business license application uh, and it's a new location, it's downtown. It's for the Jack of All Trades Concessions LLC, doing business as the Crave Scratch Kitchen, located at 347 Cotton Avenue, Macon, Georgia. It is for beer, wine, and liquor mixed drinks to be consumed on the premise at that new restaurant. It's on the corner of the alley. It used to be the China Walk uh, that was right there. Uh, and those, are, those are the applications um, what I'd like to do, if possible, is to get a motion on the seven do pass um, and then or see if anybody wants to talk about any one of those uh, out of, uh, you know, independently. Mr. Mayor. And so when you say the seven, that doesn't include the application to deny? Correct. The, the, the seven does not. It's the seven that, that we recommend recommending approval. Mr. Mayor. Michael, go Michael. ahead. Um, we did receive one public comment on agenda items that refers to the alcohol licenses. Um, it, it addresses the, the 1803 Pianono, but addresses other alcohol licenses as well. Um, oh, go, it, go ahead and, and read that because that'd be great to have, have that read as well. I skipped over public comments thinking there wasn't one, but uh, by all means, go ahead and read it. Yes, sir. This, um, this comment came from Naomi Rosan, who lives on A's Road. Um, and Naomi writes, uh, Dear Macon Bibb County Commissioners, this letter is regarding 1803 Pianono Avenue and an application for alcohol liquor to be sold there. 
Within a mile of that location, there are 21 convenience stores, liquor stores, and gas stations. No other neighborhood in the city has such a high concentration of retail businesses that add no value to the neighborhood. In fact, the influence these businesses have on the safety and health of the citizens in the neighborhood is decidedly negative. Death, murder, and trauma seem to be attracted to these establishments. If the commissioners feel strongly that Macon needs another convenience slash liquor store, put it in your neighborhoods, not ours. What we need are businesses that have a positive influence on the neighborhood. Any business related to fresh food would be a winner. Sell it, grow it, process it, eat it, learn about it. Providing access to fresh fruits and vegetables could decrease the rate of diabetes, high blood pressure, depression, anxiety, and the list goes on. Eating fresh foods is beneficial. However, growing it is also proven to have enormous physical and emotional benefits. Innovative communities across the country are addressing our long-term unemployment due to COVID-19 in imaginative ways, and one of them is teaching people how to grow their own food. Even in storefronts, vertical grow walls, hydroponic growing, aquaponics, container growing are all examples of successful innovative techniques. Um, vertical grow wall, hydroponics, container growing, mixed use, food, retail, slash growing. Convenience stores and dollar stores sell cancer, diabetes, hypertension, ADHD, depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, and perpetuate the system of oppression of poor people. This concentration of retail businesses marketing beer, tobacco, vaping, lottery, gambling, salty, sugary, fatty foods is a form of racism. A community cannot function if disease is being peddled on every street corner. If the commissioners are sincere in their desire for every neighborhood in Macon to have equal footing, you will not approve this application or any other in this community that peddle disease, liquor, fast food, tobacco, or other harmful items. In this time of social constructs being challenged, the citizens that live in this community challenge you to make better choices. Recent violence taking place in our community is linked specifically to this type of establishment. This is a time to uplift communities, not oppress them. In addition to the above points, the money these stores remove from our community is astounding. They take it out a six pack at a time, a candy bar, maybe a pack of cigs. Millions of dollars leaving our community are going to corporate polluters of the environment and companies that promote junk food. Educate the citizens about financial issues. Make healthy food easily available. Provide an environment for, of respect for self and others. These are the values that the citizens want to see in our community. Liquor stores, convenience stores, and gas stations do not promote these values. Is it any wonder that they are not approved for zoning in stable, quote, high-end, end quote, residential communities? These communities in Macon that are low income, that are populated with people of color, have endured zoning bigotry for decades. This is the time to stop it. The minority communities in Macon deserve better. You are elected to make good decisions for the good of the community, do the right thing for Macon, deny this and all future liquor store, gas station, and convenience store requests in these Macon neighborhoods. Give the citizens a chance to improve the community. Respectfully, Naomi Rosan of Ayers Road. Well written. Thank you. <laughs> very, very good. All right. So that was all of the public comments uh, about this. Uh, so what I'd like to do is is to to get a, a motion uh, or the committee of the committee of the whole uh, approves the seven uh, applications, uh, and then we'll vote separately on the one where the attorney's office has re uh, requested or recommend uh, disapproval. Uh, so do you want me to read the seven names again uh, lo or locations again, or do you remember them well enough to, to know? Committee of the Whole recommends approval of the seven. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, then all in favor of issuing the seven licenses uh, that were uh, recommended signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. No. Got one no, Commissioner Bivens. Uh, that'll be noted, but the eyes have it. Those seven licenses uh, will be uh, issued as requested. Now, the eighth and final license is the one for Jaya Food and Gas, located at 1803 Pinona. And 1803 Pinona is at the corner of uh, Pinona and Mercy University. There, there are two convenience stores, one right across the street from another. This one is on what I would refer to as the west side of the street. Uh, that's not closest to Cirrus Academy, but still within the prohibited distance. And Michael, do you want to say anything about how, how he lost the, the, the license for more than 12 months? 
Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, and I'll mention that Mr. Uh, Banu Partep is on the call with us. He's the owner of uh, Jaya Food Mart, and so he's he's entitled under our code to some time to address the commission as well. But um, if I can uh, share my screen, I've got the map here. And so this is the store that we're talking about. This is Mercer University Drive um, and then Pionona running north and south. And so we've got the Sitco station here and Cirrus Academy right across the street. And um, this store, the Sitco station, used to be owned by a gentleman named uh, Madame Popley. And um, Mr. Popley uh, had a license to sell alcohol there and last summer um, applied to, um, it was a change of ownership in his name as well. He applied for a license at that location. He had received a temporary license while that application was pending. And um, his uh, background check revealed that he had some pending charges against him relating to his operation of convenience stores. And so this commission, uh, you may recall, um, denied his license and revoked his um, temporary license at that location. There's a section in our code that says that when a license is revoked, the person who had the license can't get any alcohol license from the bib for two years. And the location where the license was issued cannot be licensed to anybody else for 12 months. And so when that happened, um, Mr. Popley also had a pending uh, application that was filed shortly after. Um, um, I'm sorry, Mr. Partap also had a pending application that was filed shortly after Mr. Popley's. And so um, we, we came back before the commission last September and um, the recommendation was because that application should never have been accepted in the first place because of the 12 month ban on that store location uh, to, to reject the application as incomplete to say that it was accepted an error and to refund the money to um, Mr. Partap for that alcohol license application. Um, I sent a letter to um, Mr. Partap. I've got a copy of it right here. It was dated September 4th of 2019 and um, sent that to him to say that that was the course of action that the commission approved and, and voted on, um, that he was entitled to a refund as, of his application fees. But I noted in the bottom of here, um, after the time, you, you may apply for a new alcohol license for this location on or after the time bar expires, but the proximity to Cirrus Academy may also be an obstacle in the future issuance of an alcohol license at this location. I cite to the state law, I said the legacy protections for alcohol licensees operating near school buildings and if there's a 12 month break in the lawful sale of alcoholic beverages. It's recommended that you closely investigate this question before applying for any future licenses at this location. So that 12 months um, expired back at the beginning of July. Um, Mr. Partap applied for a new license but because of that 12 month break, the protections in state law and the protections in um, our local code relating to uh, legacy provisions for uh, sales near schools has expired. And so because this um, building is within 100 yards of Cirrus Academy, uh, the law uh, department recommends denying this license. So the, the committee of the whole recommends a denial of the license uh, based on that. Michael, did you say that the, the, the current owner is on the, on the line and is, wants to speak to us or does he just want to listen? Um, I, I see Mr. Partap on the call. I, I, I would defer to him to decide for himself if he wants to address the commission. Mr. Partap, I, I, if, if you're there, you may have to unmute yourself or, or, or otherwise uh, indicate uh, to us that you want to speak to us or not? Yes, sir. I would like to uh, address everybody that uh, the grandparent did had uh, uh, the alcohol license previously and uh, beside the school property being closer or not closer. Uh, I don't know how back this goes, but uh, it had been having an uh, alcohol license uh, prior to 12 months when Mr. Popley was denied. And uh, that was uh, the only reason I went again to apply for the license because uh, the grandparents already had it. And second thing I would uh, like to mention was the, the fence is like kind of close, but I don't know if the building, it's considered as a building to be closed and 
uh, like 200 yards because the building is further than 200. It's like 250 yards. Only the fencing is like 150 yards. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, is there further discussion by members of the commission committee? The whole will recommend, recommends uh, denial. Yeah, I got a question or two. Uh, Commissioner Watkins, go ahead. Uh, so without the alcohol license, do you intend to stay open? Yes, sir. The, we are still open 24-7. Okay. And so what do you have, like the coin-operated gaming machines there? Yes, sir, we do. How many? Six of them. Six of them? What What are the gross sales out of those machines? Uh, we just had it like uh, not even like a, more than a month. We just started. And what's the, what is the percent payout on those machines to customers? Uh, we don't pay on the machine. It's only the grocery or lottery. Okay, and so did you know Mr. Popoli? Is there any relationship there? No, just like uh, he owned the property, so I leased the store from him. And oh, so, so Mr. Popoli is the owner of the, the land currently and you're leasing it from him? Yes, sir. Okay, and so the items in the store, were they, he sold those to you as well? Yes. Including the machines? Yes. Okay. It's everything is on, uh, I have leased everything and all the licenses are on my name. I'm only waiting on the alcohol so we can sell beer. All right, thank you. Uh, any, any, other, any other commissioner have a further discussion? Here, hearing none, the, the committee of the whole recommends that we deny the license. Uh, all in favor of denying the license would say yes. And if you're opposed to denying the license, you'd say no. So all in favor of denying the license, 75% aye. 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 Opposed say no. The ayes have it, then the license will be denied. Um, that concludes the uh, uh, consent agenda. And, and we'll move on now to uh, the next item, which is old old business. Uh, the first item uh, under our code of ordinances uh, under old business uh, is uh, whether or not to veto uh, the mayor's or whether or not to override, override the mayor's right whether or not to override the, the mayor's veto of the emergency ordinance requiring the use of face coverings in public. Um, it, let me just say that that I, I regret that this has become a political uh, issue. Um, uh, I would deny any pressure. Uh, from the governor's office or any threat of withholding um, money or funding, that, that nothing like that that I'm aware of. Um, but I would say this, that uh, the sheriff and I discussed the enforcement uh, of a mask ordinance, uh, and uh, the sheriff reminded me that the governor had deputized all sheriffs uh, statewide to enforce his order. Uh, therefore, he couldn't, he couldn't enforce, and we don't have a separate police department, he couldn't enforce this ordinance. So it really gets down to, to uh, an unenforceable ordinance, and an unenforceable ordinance, in my humble opinion, uh, just promotes contempt for the law. To heck with it. I don't have to do it, not going to do it. And so that's really the explanation for, for why I decided um, to, to veto it. So that having been said, is there a motion to override the veto? Mr. Lucas? Yes. Um, the, uh, Commissioner Watkins, were you first? No, ma'am, you oh, were first. Sure. I recognize you, oh, but okay. I think I... All right. All right. I would like to move to override, uh, and I'd like to speak to it. Is there a second? So move, second by Watkins. Uh, so got a motion and second, Commissioner Lucas. Let's come back to you for discussion, please, ma'am. Thank you. Um, I think that it says that we have contempt for the health of our citizens. If we uh, vote any other way than to uh, override, I know that there are things hanging in the balance 
There's uh, $8 million that we sat here and we're working on to try and get, and we do need to be reimbursed. But the right thing to do is to reimburse if, it, if it's allowable and we provide proof, then it, it, we should get the reimbursement. That's the right thing to do. Um, also, future monies, if we can justify uh, that they need to be reimbursed to us, then we should be reimbursed. So I am looking strictly as, a, as an elected member of this commission and as one of your representatives on the Board of Health. And I've tried my best to keep everybody as informed as possible about what's going on in our community. The Board of Health has taken the position and has voted by resolution to request that this body enact a mandatory mask ordinance. And whether there is enforcement or not, the majority of the people, if this commission says that because the Board of Health has asked us and because our people are dying daily, we have taken the position that we want everybody to wear a face covering. If we take that position, I think we will have taken the position that's right for the people in this community. Uh, there's no other way to express any kind of feelings on this other than either you are for the health and well-being of this community or you're not. And uh, this is by no means any disrespect to the mayor, because I do think there is tremendous pressure on this community to adhere to what the governor is saying. He's strong arming a lot of places. He's threatened to, um, he is suing Atlanta, although I see him backing off of that. And then you have our healthcare folks. There were how many in the news article that uh, employed him to please, they implored him to please, please um, uh, mandate some things that would help with the health of, the, of our, our citizens. And I hope that he uh, eventually listens to them. But the issue that we have is whether we override or not. And my vote is yes to override because I want to send a message on behalf of that over a hundred folks who sent us emails and who made phone calls who represent the other 154,000 who said, y'all need to put this in place and say to everybody, wear a mask, protect yourself. The bow means protect me, protect my babies, protect the elderly. And so that is why I'm making the motion that we override. Is there further discussion? Yes. Commissioner Wynn? Has it been seconded? Yes, it was seconded by Commissioner Watkins. Um, first, it's unfair for anyone to say that if we don't vote to override, that we don't care about people's health. That is absolutely untrue and should not have been made as a comment because I certainly I certainly believe in the health of our community and safety of our community. And to be honest, just what um, the mayor said, if we have this mandate, people are just not going to uh, adhere to it. They're not going to wear a mask. They're going to ignore it. And there'll be no, no enforcement, no uh, problems with doing that. I mean, I honestly, honestly, I wish it was as simple as mandating masks to curtail or manage the spread of this virus. For me, it's been much more I've worn a mask from the day that they said we should do that when we, if we have to go out in public. And I do go out in public, mostly to the grocery store. And I will, I wear a mask in there and continue to do so until this thing subsides to some degree. In addition, I have not gone out with friends, family, and therefore I really don't need to do the social distancing part because I am doing that by not going out and being with people I love and care for. <clears throat> And I'm doing that for their safety and their health. So don't say that I don't care about people. I think that when I see someone in the grocery store and I'm wearing my mask, even if they're wearing one, I try to go the other way or make a wide path around them. 
most stores are requiring you merit wear a mask. I've seen where I went into one store and they had someone at the door and they stopped a lady that had come in, tried to come in after me because she didn't have a mask and they sent her back out. She went to her car, she had one and she came back in with it. So those things are happening in the background that are forcing us to have to wear a mask in a public building or a public setting. And you know, when I see a party like last weekend where we had a murder, someone shot in the head, or we had a murder at a Mikado Avenue in the news people don't know how to pronounce that. I know that when you have a party like that, there are no masks being worn. There are no social distancing being adhered to. There's no hand washing or any of, the, of those other important things we should do to control this virus. So my question is, and my problem is, how do we reach these groups of people? They're not going to listen to a mandate no matter how many people vote for that. Unfortunately, I'm also seeing a lot of gatherings of many places of younger people, and that's where some of the problem lies. Young people think they're invincible, and they're not. And what they're doing, because I've had friends that had this happen to them, is they're going out in the public, they're going someplace, and they're bringing it home to their parents. So we need to reach that group. How do we do that? It's not happening yet. Even with all the news you hear every day, that's the first thing you hear on every news network locally nationally everywhere. That's what we have reports on. Folks, I would love to say we can make people wear a mask, but we cannot make them wear a mask. We cannot force people to do the right thing. We cannot control what everybody does. Let me just finish up by saying this. God help these non-compliant people. And sadly, they will only realize the importance of this mask and all the other factors, the social distancing, the hand washing, and they'll only realize the importance of all these things if one of their loved ones or one of them gets sick due to the lack of their willingness to do something this simple to protect the folks they love. If they would just do it, we could start to see some improvement and start moving forward with some normalcy in our lives. So I just want to say that that's why I'm not going to vote for this override, because I think we just need to depend on the good conscience, the good sense, the intelligence, the self-responsibility of our people to do the right thing for our community. And I do love and protect my friends, and that's why I wear a mask, and that's why I social distance. Hey, what time is it? For, for, further discussion, got Commissioner Jones, Jones next. And Commissioner Watkins, Watkins, would you also want to be recognized? Yes, please. Okay. And Commissioner Schlesinger. Okay, uh, Commissioner Jones, let you go first, and then Watkins, and then Jones. You know, two weeks ago when we passed this ordinance, I had, I voted for it. It, was, it passed seven to two. I was reluctant because of the outdoor component. And this, this, you know, and, and I also would concur with Commissioner Wynn. I think everybody, I can't speak for everybody, but I bet you everybody is concerned about the health of every citizen making every commissioner, every person in the government. I think that's true. So I do a lot of things. I've been doing a lot of things. Personally, I, I wear the mask. I carry them in my car. I, I even wear goggles. I've got some sport glasses that I wear. I wear goggles. I don't touch door handles in any public facility. I've even got I've either got on disposable gloves or a paper towel that get thrown in the trash. I don't use anybody else's pen, especially don't ever use anybody else's pen at the doctor's office, especially if it's a primary physician, because think about it, those people are there probably sick. I don't use the, I don't use the pen at, at the Kroger when I go pick up my pharmacy. I'm gonna wear a disposable glove. I'm not gonna touch that pen. I do a lot of different things. I use vitamin D3, which builds up your immune system. Been more than a dozen clinical studies worldwide that tells you that builds up your immune system. I don't know why doctors at the federal level are not talking about that, but they're not. There's been a lot of confusion from the Surgeon General. First, don't wear a mask. It could be harmful to you. Then we need to wear a mask. Many of the masks are not sufficient to block a lot of different things. Even the N95 masks that the medical people are not as sufficient as you think they are. I'm not shaking hands. I'm, I'm Lysoling door handles. All of those sorts of things, the mask, I believe in and I, and I wear them. I, went, I wore it in a restaurant, took it off while I ate lunch today and then put it back on. But the mask in and of itself gives the public, in my view, a false sense of security. It's not the cure-all, the end-all, 
Do I think everybody should wear them? Absolutely. But I don't, but we also know that, you know, the crowds and the, you see it on the news, they got this huge crowd going through South Dakota on a motorcycle thing. They've got this event in Illinois. They've got another one in California where it's all spiking. So if we can do what we're supposed to do with the governor's mandate, then we'll be a heck of a lot better off. We're going to spend $700,000 on a media blitz. I've had friends and constituents say, why in the world would you spend that money? It seems like everybody, unless they've been in a coma since March 1st, they knows the, know the seriousness of, of, of the COVID-19. Mainly, two reasons. It's a false sense of security, although I believe you, you should wear them. I'm going to wear them every day. But it's, since it's not constitutional, it's not enforceable. There's not going to be one, one deputy that's going to walk up to anybody and give them a ticket. I doubt that they would even walk up to them and fine them. Uh, to the public's credit, and I think we have to trust others to a large degree, in the publics on Bass Road that I go this close to my office all the time, I was in there the other day and, and observed 60 or 70 people many of those staff, many of them customers, I only found one person without a mask. So I was, I was very impressed that, that people are doing that. So I'm not going to vote to override it because number one, it's not enforceable. It's not constitutional, thus it's not enforceable. So it may, it may make the public feel better. And I've got lots of constituents that want me to vote for it. I do not like the outdoor component, as I said from two weeks ago. Every expert that I've read about or heard about on TV, and there are exceptions to everything, if you had a crowd of 50 uh, college guys all huddled together drinking at the beach, yeah, they could, they could get it. But every expert says it is almost impossible to get it outdoors. So what is somebody supposed to do as they're cutting the grass? They're supposed to wear a mask just because they're worried about COVID? I don't think so. So it's not, it's a very flawed ordinance and that's not a criticism, but it's just a flawed ordinance. I will not vote to override it. Uh, thank you. Commissioner Watkins got you next, then Commissioner Schlesinger. Yeah, thank you, sir. So I, I guess I'm a little concerned on the concept of under the, the, the thought of unenforceable laws. Uh, there are a lot of laws on making books that the sheriff, as well as the county, has difficult and very rarely enforces. Um, I think there was some conversation about the making Bill County curfew earlier this week, and we've had a curfew on the book for people under 18, you know, the whole entirety of our office at midnight. We, we keep that on the books, but don't enforce it. Um, I think back to the state's decision on seat belts and even more recently texting while driving, both very difficult to enforce. And I think at this point, texting while driving is rarely enforced, but the notion of it being against the law has undeniably saved many lives. I, many, many lives. I think we're all doing better at the idea of texting while driving because we passed the law against it. Um, and my understanding of the coronavirus pandemic as it relates to masks is that the data suggests that mask wearing reduces the spread. The data also suggests that communities that have created mandates, whether or not they have enforced them or not, are seeing better results when it comes to reducing the spread. We being a legislative body, I think mandating is the strongest language that we can use on the issue. And I'm, I guess we're all requesting that we use the same strongest language to try to have the greatest effect that we can on the lives of our citizens. Um, I know that some people are still, like, I know a lot of people who completely believe that the coronavirus and have been paying attention but there are some naysayers and some conspiracy theorists among us um, that are not as believing as, as others. So these type of things. There are also people who think that they can talk on the phone and watch videos and they're that skilled of a driver and nothing bad will happen. And 
whether it's enforced or not, we're trying our best to, to use our powers as legislators to save lives. So that's our purpose, but thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Watkins. Uh, Commissioner Schlesinger, you're last. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, like everybody else on the uh, commission, I have been inundated with uh, requests to uh, override the uh, veto. And a lot of the people who are requesting this are people who are at risk and genuinely afraid. I'll point right now to the article that Eric Erickson wrote in the uh, Telegraph on Sunday. Uh, he has health issues. He has, his wife has health issues. And what he said was that we all need to be good Samaritans, even if it inconveniences us, good Samaritans who are looking out for the welfare of those people in this community who are most uh, at risk. Now, you know, Kroger and other uh, stores have a policy. The policy is that if you're going to shop there, you've got to uh, wear a mask. And that needs to be the policy of uh, Macon Bibb County. You have to wear a mask. I'm not just saying this uh, on behalf of uh, me. We heard at the beginning of our pre-commission meeting uh, our uh, EMA director say, we have to wear masks. That's not just this commission, that's everybody in this, this community. Uh, our uh, board of uh, health, our local board of health uh, voted that uh, we, in support of people throughout the county wearing masks and it becomes the uh, policy. Um, Mr. Mayor, your, your veto sends out the, the wrong message. Um, uh, yes, it, it has gotten political, and I think there is a lot of substance to the uh, politics and fear that uh, Atlanta is not going to come forth with uh, money that we might get if we were uh, supporting the uh, governor. I, you know, personally, I don't think he's right. And, uh, you know, we've heard that from uh, our experts um, in this uh, community. Uh, so I'm going to vote to uh, override simply because I believe that the policy of Macon Bibb County needs to be that if you are out in public, you need to be wearing a mask, plain and simple. And we've got all sorts of experts who are backing this, um, this up. Let's do it for uh, those uh, people who are most at risk. Uh, let's all be good Samaritans like Eric uh, says, and let's do what God wants us to do, and that's to uh, protect each other any which way that we can. And this is the best way we can do it in the pandemic. Very good, is there further discussion? Yes, one more comment, please. Commissioner Wynn. Uh, the you, you you use the fact that there or someone's used the fact that we have laws out there that seem to help save lives. The law of drinking and driving has not been mentioned. DUI people that drink and drive, people that drink mm -hmm. and drive are killing people. They don't listen to a law that's out there. And if you you've got laws out there that people break every day, and I can probably guess that a lot of you, I'll be I'll be the first to admit that I do not text and drive, but I talk on the phone with the phone in my hand sometimes because I can hear better that way versus through the car. But I think that's a distraction and I think I'm breaking the law, but I do it and I bet you all do too. It's just that yeah. this mask thing is not the only thing that protects our community folks. The mask is one item. There's social distancing, which is to me the main. If you do not go out and socially uh, be with people, you're not going to get the virus. You're not going to give it to somebody. If you stay <laughs> home, social distance, as we are being asked to do, that's going to be your main thing. Wearing masks, people are intelligent. They shouldn't have to be told to do this. I totally agree with wearing masks. I've done it every day, have them in my car. I have masks everywhere in my house and in my car. I believe in wearing masks. That's not it at all. It's just that's one small component of trying to fight this virus. The next component and the biggest one to me is social distancing. I just mentioned the party we had last weekend in Macon where someone was shot and killed. 
there's no social distancing going on there. There's no mask wearing. We need to look at these people, find out where these groups are, these young people, not necessarily young at that party, but people that are out there not listening to any of the rules that are out there, not listening to anything that's being recommended. Let's, how do we get to them? They're not gonna read billboards. They could care less. I hate to say this, they could care less because they're out there partying. But I think we have a lot of things to look at besides just wearing a mask. That is one component. We have other components. Wash your hands is the biggest thing they talk about all the time. <clears throat> those things are things that are important. They're all part of this and we all need to do all of those, not just one. And we can't enforce the mandate anyway and people will ignore it. And some will ignore it just to do it because they can do it. All right, uh, without further discussion, I'll ask Kurt to call the roll. Um, if, if I may, I just want to. All right, be aware now, because she's going to get the last word now. So you might well go. Yeah, and I, I just wanted to uh, <laughs> clarify a little bit. All right, the, uh, come on, Mayor Pro Tem. You know, I got to say something right. else. Yes. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Watkins, did you have a, a further yes. discussion, point of further discussion? Yes, thank you. Go ahead, uh, sir. The actual ordinance that we passed, right, it, it um, has a few it has six actual items lined out as things to be considered impractical like i think someone was talking about the idea of having to wear it outside so it states if you're you're if you're under the age of 10 years old you don't need to wear it if you're in your personal vehicle you don't need to wear it if you're exercising outdoors if you're eating drinking or smoking if you have uh health health conditions that it will aggravate um, or if it would pre prevent the need of personal service, such as health or mental or dental care. Um, all of those exist. And I did want to speak to the analogy just briefly. Yes, drink DUI is illegal. I have no misunderstanding about that. And I believe that me and anybody else who does it should be penalized. I, that is the rules and the law and i think is there to help because it is a very dangerous thing i'm not minimalizing that in any type of way but it is also dangerous to just be breathing in. apparently now it's dangerous just to be breathing in front of folks without a mask on and if somebody catches me doing that i don't have no problem taking the ticket like because we all should be doing better so yeah very good. Th thank you, Commissioner Watkins. So, uh, without further discussion, I'll ask the clerk. Oh, Commissioner Jones, you, you got something else, sir? Yeah, so just, and, and, and I was looking at the section uh, Commissioner Watkins read out, and he's right. And, and, and remember, what we passed two weeks ago says that you're supposed to wear a mask outdoors. And every expert says it's nearly impossible to get it outdoors. So, we don't, number one, you can say it's not enforceable, but it's also not going to be the law because it's not constitutional. So it's okay. a this is the document that we passed two weeks ago, so we're clear. Let's don't have back and forth, please. Let's don't have back and forth. Address your comments to the chair. I'm just trying Point to. Of order. So it's just so I'm clear. Point I'll come order. back to you, Commissioner Watkins. Let Commissioner Jones finish. Oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, so it's, you can say it's not enforceable, and it's not. It's a feel good legislation. And it's not the law. We can pass it as the law, but it's not the law because it's in conflict with the governor's mandate that says you can't be more or less restrictive. And this would be more restrictive. As I said two weeks ago, I wish he had come out like the governor of Oklahoma, Governor Stitt, and said, here's my mandate. This is what you follow. You can be more res restrictive as a local municipality if you like, and you can pass it as such. But that's not what it says. So regardless, even though it's uh, in place or not in place, it carries no more weight. All right, uh, Commissioner Watkins, your point of order, sir? Yeah, I just wanted to be clear that the item, the veto, and the, the provisions that I wrote are, are what, is what was passed last week and what's on the table today, all right? Correct. All right. Call for the vote. Correct. Uh, yeah, right. I, I, without further discussion, uh, if you want to override the veto, you would vote yes. If you do not want to override call. the veto, you'd vote no. So now I'll ask the, right, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Commissioners, if you would please unmute. Commissioner Allen, how do you vote? No. Commissioner Bivens, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Jones, how do you vote? No. 
Commissioner Lucas, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Shepard, how do you vote? Commissioner Shepard, would you please unmute? No. Commissioner Schlesinger, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Tillman, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Watkins, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Wynn, how do you vote? No. Vote five to four. The veto is overridden. No. It takes six. It takes six. Takes six. Six votes. You had uh, five, five to four. So the, the veto, veto is not. It is not overridden. Could have been overridden. Okay. But it it was not five. five Five, five to four vote. All right, so we move Mayor, we move on record. to the next. We move Mr. Mayor, on to the next. Mr. Mayor, for the record, can you please let the clerk restate uh, the uh, veto? Was it override or not? To give her opportunity to correct yes, herself. The vote was five to four, and so the veto is not overridden. Just wanted to give her opportunity to correct that. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Good. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Moving on, next item on the agenda is the pro project uh, for construction financing and to back the bonds uh, for the construction financing to re redo the Willie Hill Annex building. I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. Resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission authorizing the Macon Bibb County to enter into an intergovernmental contract with the Macon Bibb County Urban Development Authority and to take such further actions as are necessary for the issuance of up to $23 million in aggregate principal amount of Macon Bibb County Urban Development Authority taxable revenue bonds, series 2020, to take such actions as may be required for the authority to issue its series 2020 bonds, to authorize the mayor, the county manager, and other officers and officials of the county to take such further actions as are necessary to provide for the issuance and delivery of the series 2020 bonds described herein and for other purposes. Uh, the committee of the whole uh, recommends approval with the amendment of changing the split of the administrative fee from 50, 50 to 70, 30, 70% to make and bib 30%. Is there further discussion? He hearing none, let me get the clerk to call the roll again. We'll do a roll call vote uh, one more time because I, I, I want to be sure we get this right. And we'll be doing the roll by district. Right. If you're in favor, if you're in favor of the resolution, you'd vote yes. If you're opposed to it, you'd vote no. Commissioner Wynn, how do you vote? I am going to vote yes with the um, note that I'm not happy with some of the pieces of this resolution, mainly the $900 for a park. All right, I did it. Commissioner Schlesinger, how do you vote? Uh, yes. Commissioner Lucas, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Jones, how do you vote? I don't like some of the components. 900,000 going toward a passive park. Uh, it's a good project. And if Josh Rogers speaks highly of it, then I'm, I'm in favor of it. Commissioner Bivens, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Allen, how do you vote? No. Commissioner Shepard, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Watkins, how do you vote? Yes, although I think the $23 million for the county to fund the hotel is ridiculous. That's but I do like the $900,000 part. That's, That's, just good. That's the smartest thing you said all night. Point of order. I, I, I thought, let's go on. Let's got, got, wait a minute. Got, got one more vote here. Then we'll come back. Mayor Pro Tem, how do you vote? Yes. <laughs> All right, got uh, eight to eight to one. The uh, eyes have it. Was there a point of order somebody wanted to make? Oh, just because we, 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 we just need to get back and and stop everybody from jumping in on top of right. everybody. Okay, okay. All right, so eight eight to one. Eight to one. The eyes have it, and and the uh, resolution as amended is adopted. Uh, next is uh, item C, which is uh, a resolution to, to declare a 1973 Jeep CJ. Uh, as surplus property and to satisfy a materialman's lien to Sam Hughley by uh, quit claiming the vehicle to him. I'll ask the clerk to read that by a caption. A resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission 
declaring 1-1973 Jeep CJ serial number Georgia 52898 to be surplus property to authorize the mayor to convey the same to Sam Hughley and for other lawful purposes. The committee of the whole uh, recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Mr. Mayor. Commissioner, Commissioner Lucas and then Commissioner Allen. Thank, thank you. Um, I am really distressed to learn that Sam Hughley uh, <laughs> uh, retired. He is <laughs> such a wonderful person, has been with us <clears throat> for so long and has saved us so much money over the, over the years and has done it just quietly, you know, in that, that laid back way that he has. So I <laughs> want to say publicly how much I have appreciated him over the years and his friendship through the city council days, as well as the uh, new days of consolidated government and wish him well. Um, as he ventures out, he has a lot of business uh, opportunities that he has neglected over the years. And his wife uh, has businesses as well. So I know he'll be busy, but we just want to wish him well. And I want to um, um, move to approve the Jeep. Second. Right. Well, we, we, we had a, had a, had a uh, committee okay. of the whole uh, move for approval. But I think we're going to do this uh, unanimously, I believe. Commissioner Allen, got you next, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. Uh, Mayor, isn't that, I mean, I, I, I like Mr. Hughley, he's a good man, but is that considered a gratuity if we only get one dollar from him or you give him a dollar? No, sir. It's, a, it's in satisfaction of material man's lean for the time, effort, and energy that he spent to, to resurrect it, the kind of thing. He'd have a material man's lean on it, so we're satisfying the lean, so it's not a gratuity. And also, also, uh, Commissioner Allen's good question. Um, the Jeep had no value. Our ownership in it had no value. And you, as, actually, as a matter of fact, for storage and keeping it up ourselves was more uh, cost than it was worth. So actually, he's doing us a favor by taking it off our hands from a gratuity. Well, that's good. I mean, the gratuity clause is always hit. I mean, yeah. even for a dollar, it would have been okay. I mean, he's you're, good. You're right. I'd give him a dollar myself for, you know, to give it to him. So, <laughs> I give it a dollar. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all of <coughs> the resolution signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say no. The, aye, the ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Uh, uh, next uh, is an ordinance uh, to amend Chapter 26 regarding the Community Redevelopment Tax Incentive Program. I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. An ordinance of the Macon Bibb County Commission to amend that portion of chapter 26 of the Code of Ordinances of Macon Bibb County relating to the Macon Bibb County Community Redevelopment Tax Incentive Program and to provide for other lawful purposes. Uh, the committee of the whole recommends approval with the further amendment uh, to change the, the economic and community development to the proper oversight agency overseeing blight. The committee of the whole recommends approval as amended. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the ordinance uh, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say no. The ayes have it. The ordinance as amended is adopted. Uh, next is item E, which is a, a resolution to ratify the acceptance of the CARES uh, funds uh, under terms and conditions specified uh, by the state. And I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission ratifying and authorizing the acceptance of the coronavirus relief fund allocation from the state of Georgia, Governor's Office of Planning and Budget in the amount of $8,017,519.33 to be used for coronavirus related expenses through December the 30th, 2020 with no local match and for other lawful purposes. A uh, committee of the whole recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Commissioner Lucas, and then um, Commissioner Shepard, I see you also, if you oh, want, but okay. Commissioner Lucas, oh, okay, Commissioner thank, Lucas. Thank you. I just want to uh, commend the Board of Health, as I heard earlier that the Board of Health has incurred uh, some expense as far as masks and other uh, uh, protective yeah. uh, items, 
And so I want to say that the Board of Health, I believe, had a major mass distribution today at a number of different sites. Uh, I have volunteered my school as a distribution site, and we will be distributing masks. As a matter of fact, I already handed out a few to some families today. And so I just encourage everybody to uh, find out where those masks are going to be available and take advantage of having enough so that you can protect yourself and your family. But I'm glad the Board of Health is a part of it and is utilizing the funds. Good. Uh, is there further discussion? Mr. Mayor, I, yeah. have a, I, I just came to my attention. Um, this particular um, committee, the whole amendment has got approved first before we vote on, if it's approved for the vote on the whole thing. And Michael, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Will you explain the change that they've, that the uh, Yes, sir. Um, let me, let me pull up the um, yep. resolution. I just I changed the language slightly um, following the discussion last week. Um, it came to our attention. Uh, I think July 29th, the governor released the the guidance that said that everything had to be submitted by September 1st. And so this was changed a little bit to accommodate the rapid timeline that we talked about in pre-commission. And so um, just to show, just to show what's uh, different, I added a couple of paragraphs here. Um, this paragraph is new. It says, um, "Be a further resolve: the mayor is authorized to seek reimbursement of funds and identify appropriate projects or expenses to submit for reimbursement approval, in accordance with the terms of the agreement attached here too at Exhibit A, which is the like 40-page uh, terms and conditions document from the governor's office." which shall include without limitation supporting the health and recovery of the Macon Bibb County workforce, community, and economy. Um, what does that mean to you? What does that line do? Th those are categories of, of ways no, no, no. that the What does that spent. addition do? What is, what, is the, what is the material or effect of change to that statement? So <clears throat> because we have to get everything submitted by September 1st, there isn't time to come up with a plan, come back, submit it for referral to committees, go through the committee process and get commission approval. And Why so wouldn't it be time for that? And how are y'all, what? So, so this ahead. authorizes the mayor to identify the projects uh, to, to submit for um, reimbursement approval without having to come back to the commission with a project list. Um, and that's that's again because we've got we've got like two weeks to get all the paperwork submitted. So, we have to do it early in case they don't in case they decline anything. We have time to replace it. Who asked you to change the? Language? So operations and finances available to meet at the nearest available time. I was expecting okay. to do this on Tuesday, but we need to meet prior to. But I, I don't want to speak to the rest of the commission. But certainly, you don't want to appropriate eight million dollars with no discussion from the commission or the rest of the community certainly that's not what you're implying here is it it's kind of <laughs> no, I mean, that's not actually that's not kind of that's exactly right. right please walk me through that right so that's that's the first paragraph the second paragraph says this this was also added um be it further resolved the mayor is authorized to award any contracts for goods or services in the course of expending funds pursuant to this resolution without having to follow the formal competitive processes set forth in chapter 19 of the Macon Bibb County Code of Ordinances, provided that any state laws concerning competitive purchasing requirements must still be followed. And so long as reasonable steps are taken to ensure that Macon Bibb County obtains the best value for its money under the circumstances. So even though we've talked about this in pre-commission, talked about this several times, and me and you talked about, not me and you, Michael, but me and you, the mayor, me, the mayor, and the rest of the body talked right. about this idea. This major change, we're just going to throw up here like it's minor, like right now. Like this is not a, this is a major substantive change. And again, I'm, let me yield. I don't have the floor and there are other commissioners with their hand up. I apologize, but it threw me off. Okay. Um. And those, those are the only two substantive changes. And then I added a whereas paragraph about the fact that we have to spend everything in full by September 1st. And so part of this was 
that the governor changed the rules or or added new information on July 29th. They added new information since the last time this commission met to say, because we were thinking spend the first 2.4 by September 1st, you've oh. got until December 30th to spend the other five. Now That's they've changed it and said, you have to have the whole thing by September 1st. What says that? This is not, this is not, I don't just, I don't agree with that. That's not what anything, so you don't have to have, you have to have it spent, you have to have it appropriated by September 1st with a budget that you submit, but it doesn't have to be spent until December 31st. It, it has to be, it has to be reported to what you're going to spend it on. It has to be, so yeah, right. like you doesn't said, need appropriate, to be spent but you can't, full. right. Right. right, it says must be spent in full in this document, and that's not by September 21st. That's Re not request for reimbursement must be submitted no later than. Right so, below it. I'm sorry, you're right. You're right. It does say that. I'm. And it must be spent. I've made a couple of changes to this draft mm -hmm. in the last week, so I apologize. That's a well, that's an artifact that well, I should have taken. If, if I can speak, uh, uh, we talked about this at five o'clock, and this is exactly what I said. And so when you said last time we met. We just met and discussed it at five o'clock and right. the concerns exactly were that we were not going to do this without the commission's input. And then we come back and change the language uh, from five o'clock to six o'clock. It, well, it, it's just disingenuous to do that. No, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me say this. We're all trying to, to make this work. Uh, and it is a very difficult task. But I hope you know me well enough to know that when I tell you I'm certainly going to include and rely heavily on commission input, I mean that. I, you th I, I'm not going to just go off on, on a, a wild ride by myself. Uh, I need the commission majority behind me. So I just wanted to say that. And certainly I'm not trying to be disingenuous with you, my fellow commissioners. Um, we were all in the same meeting on this same call an hour ago when Commissioner Tillman asked you this very question, to which you said that, no, nah, I wouldn't do anything, but the whole time you had the exact language in your back pocket. The, 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 the fact that, that this gives me the authority doesn't mean that's the way I'm going to do it, and I'm dead serious when I say I, I want Julie to submit the budget to you as quick as we get it put together. Uh, if you want to call a, uh, a meeting of operations and finance committee, a special call meeting, I'm all for that so that you can go over it. I'm not making this decision by my own, by myself. You know that. Well, but we've got, a, we've, got a, we've got we've got we've got a we've got a very short timeline to try to get this submitted. So it's going we're going to have to we're going to have to do this a different way if we want if we want to play in this game. So you start off with us wrong though, because. Of I, I, we asked you was this about this and you said no at the opportunities we had to talk about the budget you said no i just need approval of receiving the money i'm not talking about expending and this this is exactly that sir and again i meant to put my thing on mute because i see other hands up I, i'm sorry uh is there further discussion commissioner allen i see your your hand up thank you Mr. Mayor, didn't we already, didn't we already spend seven hundred thousand dollars for media out of this out of this money? Well, technically, we did. We 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 spent seven hundred thousand dollars out of fund balance, hoping to be reimbursed out of this money. And, it, the, and it's supposed to be the, reimbursed for the, for the PSAs yeah. that we. But we have a date for it to be reimbursed. Is that not correct? Mm, no, no, for it to be spent. Not no. Really. Let, I'm talking can I, can about. I, go ahead, Duke. Go I, ahead. Thank you. We cannot get any reimbursement for anything from this fund unless the commission, and this is in accordance with the agreement uh, that the state sent, unless the commission approves the acceptance of the money and the terms and conditions that the, the document and the regulations put on the county. I mean, we won't be able to get any reimbursement. Well, any basically, what you're what we're saying then, we don't need just the finance committee. We need this board as a whole, all nine commissioners and the mayor and the attorneys to sit down and work this out with Julie. We don't need to just have three or four people decide what they're going to do, take it over to administration, and then we find out later. Yeah, no, what I'm saying is and that's a, that's up to y'all to figure out how y'all want to spend the money subject to how you spend it in accordance with the law and that's that's what julie i think has developed and i think there was a meeting 
Commissioner May Watkins may have been on call or whatever the last week or a couple of days ago. What the, the commission, what the law requires for this commission to do to get reimbursement for anything related to this fund is to pass a resolution accepting the money and accepting the terms and conditions upon which is given, just like a grant. Beyond that, the commission can put any restrictions it wants subject to the law on the administration, how to, how to spend it. Can I, can uh, I Commissioner, ask that? Yes, Commissioner Wynn, let me get you, let me, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Did you say Michael wanted to have something? No, no, up? the Commissioner uh, Wynn had her hand up. Okay, okay. yeah, I just, I, Commissioner Wynn? I, I agree with Commissioner Watkins. When this came up at the five o'clock pre-commission meeting, it was to resolution to, to let you accept the funds, not how you're going to decide to spend them. And then we talked about Julie Moore making out this list Right, and I think she's already pretty close to having it per what Dr. Moffat said, is my understanding. I'd like for us to see that list if, if we can't meet on at least see it as soon as she's done with it. I time is of essence, I realize that, but this what we just saw just a minute ago from uh, Michael, attorney Michael uh, McNeil, is, is a change from what we said at the pre commission meeting at five o'clock because this is saying you're going to decide how to spend it but the but the resolution really just said we're going to let you accept that money and then we can decide yeah. we all need to be there can i follow up mr mayor uh commissioner tell uh since we are meeting by zoom and uh we can give the uh media 24 hours uh and uh, and this is finance and money and they're going to meet tuesday uh i think we ought to table this until then and we can uh, i'll come back and zoom and and commissioners can have input uh, until then. So I offer a motion. Uh, I, I don't have to offer a motion, but I, I'm not going to offer a motion, but that's a suggestion. Uh, but I'll give others an opportunity to chime in. Or, or you can simply remove the language, sir. Yeah. That authorizes you to uh, do the contract and spend the money. Or um, commissioners, if you're, I think if commissioners want input, then we can move to uh, do something else. But just remember, excuse me, Mr. Mayor, what that said is that we have to spend the money by September the 1st is the way I was reading that. But but I think that's a good thing to do, just remove this different language and go back and vote on the thing that we originally were going to vote on. Is there further discussion? Mr. Mayor. Michael. Um, yeah, so just to clarify, so the, the resolution that was um, approved in committee last week is limited only to the um, approving the governor's terms and conditions. It says nothing about the spending of the money or doing contracts or anything like that. Um, the amendment document was drafted at the request of Dr. Moffitt and Julie Moore to give the administration flexibility because of the tightness of these deadlines. And so, um, you know, if, if y'all would, if, if, if the commission feels that it's appropriate to accept the terms of the um, grant money without getting into the question of, Yep. how is the decision on what to spend, then you can decline the amendment and approve the document that was approved last week in committees. And that's limited yeah. only to the, um, the $8 that's million. That's the first dollars. paragraph in it, Michael. That's right. The first paragraph be therefore be it resolved. Is that correct? Yeah, just the first paragraph, right. That, that would just accept the money and the terms and conditions. And that was the original motion last week. Is that right? Right. So that's that's this document that I've got on the screen now. So it's just got we're accepting the eight million dollars subject to the terms and conditions um, attached in, in the exhibit, which is the exhibit is the governor's document that he sent us from the Office of Planning and Budget. And then we've got our standard boilerplate about if there's a Scrivener error or that kind of thing. And so um, that's all that the document from last week does. And if, if the commission doesn't want to get into the question of you know, how is it, how is it spent or allocated or who makes those decisions, right. then you can adopt this without adopting the amendment. So All that's right. why the, that's why I think the, the county attorney said we needed to, to vote on the amendment first yes, sir. and then, then vote on the main motion. Yes, sir. So voting on the, the main, the, excuse me, the amendment uh, that seems to be at issue here, if you wanted to vote not to include the amendment, not to make the right. amendment, then you would vote no. Oh, did the motion? Did you, get a motion in a second? Well, good, good, good point. Uh, we, we, I'm not sure that we did have a motion in a second to no. make the amendment. 
So maybe so. that maybe that maybe that would be the the easiest parliamentary way out of this. Is, is there is there a motion in second to make the amendment? Move. Yeah. Yes. You no 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 no. no. Let me make sure, Commissioner Allen. I think what the mayor's asking for is there a motion to approve the amendment to add the amendment? No, no, no. I thought he should. I thought he was saying the other thing. I'm sorry. Right. So if you don't want the amendment, don't say anything. <laughs> okay. Okay. So so if I don't have a motion for the amendment. You do not. So. Okay, then, 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 then we're back. We're back to, to the original document as it was prepared last week. In fact, that does nothing but accept the money, so, subject to, to the conditions in Exhibit A. Michael, can you put that back up there one more time? It's pretty simple. Right. Okay, so this is this is the original this is the original version that's on the screen now. So there's the now therefore be it resolved. We agree to accept this uh, eight million dollars uh, subject to the terms and conditions uh, uh, of Exhibit A. This forty-page document that would follow, and then the rest of it, according to Michael, and he can run, run through them. Right. Oh, don't go to that. Good night. That's no, it, yeah. That's the terms and conditions in Exhibit A. But uh, the what Michael said was boilerplate underneath that. Be it further resolved that. Uh, Commission hereby declares a foregoing preamble to be this, and be it further resolved that in the event of scrivener's errors, we can correct that, and the mayor grants authority this out of the other. So the standard yeah. boilerplate. So that's that's your that's your language. To to be perfectly honest, that I I thought uh, we were we were working on, and I'm glad we had the discussion about the the amendment and the revisions to it. I will say we are going to be under a mighty mighty uh, tight timeline, and and going to have to work really hard to get this done. But is there further discussion about the original motion without the amendment? No, do we have a motion on that? Uh, well, it came, out, it came out of committee. I'll make the motion to go ahead and no, approve. Well, uh, this guy got a, a comment. Uh, is it appropriate <coughs> to uh, offer the committee chairs uh, to work with uh, Julie and your administration, Mr. Mayor, uh, of, of the, right. chair, of the okay. chair members? themselves to work with you to, uh, and I would trust the committee chairs to come up and formulate, help formulate this. Is is that is that something that uh, we want to yeah. entertain or, or you just want to go with I, it? I, I'd be glad to entertain that, but we don't need to do that as part of this discussion. I mean, we've already, we've already I, I, inc included Commissioner Watkins on it and, I, and I'm, I, listen, I'm just telling you, I'm more than willing to, to get commission well, approval. I don't want to ride well, out well, there well, and I'm make all this Commissioner about Watkins. Stuff. My understanding is Commissioner Watkins was working with you all and you just tried to change up something. So I'm just interested if there were other commissioners, then I would, uh, you know, be willing to uh, add them as part of this discussion. But uh, it, it would be up to those committee chairs to reach out and That's uh, fine. Get, have input. And, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Is a further discussion on the, on the original motion without the amendment. All right, then, then, th then those in favor would vote yes, and if you're opposed, you, you'd vote no. This is on the main motion without the amendment, so drop the amendment off. All those in favor of accepting accepting the money uh, t subject to the terms and conditions of Exhibit A, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say no. All right, the ayes have it, and the, the resolution is adopted, but not the amendment, not the amended version, all right? Correct. Okay. And if so, I could add, I'm sorry, Mayor. Can I add one thing? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, given the tight timeline, and it, um, and I'm looking through the amendment part. Be. My, what I'm hearing is that there's going to be something where the, the committee it's representatives or somebody from or some members or all members of the commission get with the administration and, and go through Julie's budget. Um, I would encourage you after that's done to. Um, consider the competitive process that's also in the amendment that's and you, we can talk about it at the appropriate time but we're not going to be able to go through I'm just giving you a preview we're not going to be able to go through in a timely way uh, a, the normal competitive process to the extent it'll apply because of the timeline so just just kind of be thinking about that that's that's in the amendment but and also mm -hmm. if there's a meeting I just want to remind everybody if there's a meeting more than a quorum we've got to do an open meetings okay on that all right, uh, very good. Let's move on to item F, uh, which is the acceptance of a grant at John Drew Smith. I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Macon County Commission 
authorized and then acceptance of a grant from the United States Tennis Association in the amount of $30,000 to be used by the Macon Bibb County Recreation Department at the John Drew Smith Tennis Center and for other lawful purposes. Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Item G is a similar resolution, I think, for uh, John Drew Smith, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission authorizing the acceptance of a Build It Forward grant from from United States Tennis Association Southern in the amount of $30,000 to be used by the Macon Bibb County Recreation Department at the John Drew T Smith Tennis Center and for other lawful purposes. Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. The ayes have it, the resolution is adopted. Uh, item H is next. Uh, and, and that is a, uh, uh, an ordinance to amend certain sections of the code for purpose of authorizing a non-competitive purchase of dirt as a commodity. I'll ask the clerk to read that uh, by caption. An ordinance of the Macon Bibb County Commission to amend certain sections of Chapter 19 of the Macon Bibb County Code of Ordinances for the purpose of authorizing the non-competitive purchase of dirt as a commodity and for other lawful purposes. Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the ordinance signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say no. The ayes have it, the ordinance is adopted. Uh, next is uh, item I, um, which is an amendment to the uh, Superior Court Clerk's budget to, to transfer some salary monies around. And I'll ask the uh, clerk to read that by caption. An ordinance of the Macon Bibb County Commission to amend the Superior Court Clerk's budget by transferring $16,283 from the Contract Workers Temporary Seasonal Line Item to various salary and benefits line item to fund a salary increase for the Chief Deputy Clerk 3 position and for other lawful purposes. Uh, Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir, Commissioner Allen. Mr. Mayor, we've been working on a, a study, a pay study. We finally got one. Four or five months coming into this pay study, we have someone coming down and wanting us to give a big raise that might throw this individual directly out of where they're going. And then they'll probably want another raise in January. I hope we hold up on this until we can get uh, our chairman of finance and the crew together and sit down and see where everybody's supposed to fall. Trying to go out and give them a, a raise right now. And you got other employees out there that are, that need help immediately. And we're going out and give, we're going to give that kind of money to one employee. Mr. Mayor, that, that just is not right. Not right now. It's not. That's all I have to say. Very good. Is, is there further discussion? Yes, Commissioner Jones. Now, yes, sir. My recollection is this was not passed out of committee. That's my recollection. It did. It, it, it was passed. Out. Yeah. It. Yeah. It, it. Yeah. It, it did. It did. It did come out of. It, it was tabled initially. Right. Uh, and then uh, at the two weeks later, uh, it, there was some discussion about tabling it again. But the uh, uh, clerk of the Superior Court uh, called in, came on to the Zoom and explained the, the situation and the committee agreed to revisit it. They, they, they did revisit it uh, and discuss it and pass it out of committee is my recollection. I agree with Commissioner Allen. I don't think it's appropriate to pick and choose a person here or there and, and give a pay increase when we're working on a pay scale right, got you. for the entire workforce. Uh, uh, Commissioner Lucas and then Commissioner Wynn. Yeah, um, you know, some people are just as hypocritical as they can be. Um, uh, direct your comments know, to the chair, please, ma'am. And I'm talking to you. I, mm -hmm. I am addressing you. Uh, <laughs> not necessarily saying that <laughs> about you, but I am addressing you. Uh, there are some folks who um, 
are disingenuous. They they really do. Oh, the citizens just look at us and just wonder what is going on. And not too long ago, uh, Judge Sims came over to us and asked us not to take money that was already, um, it wasn't money that was that was coming from within the budget already. It was new money. It was money coming from the fund balance to make sure that there was a position that because of state cuts, it was one of the accountability courts. And I think the, um, the chair of operations probably remembers that, but it was one of the courts and it was to make sure that the person who supervised that entire court would be in place in light of the fact that the state was looking at like a 14% cuts to uh, allotments for the courts. And so we approved that. And that was out of our fund balance. That was not already in the budget. This amount is already in the budget of the um, that court. And so uh, y'all need to be consistent. You really, uh, uh, Ms. Mayor, our membership needs to be consistent in what they do. And uh, fortunately, some of us remember when we do these things and are here to remind us that we have set a precedent. And I'm all for us waiting for a lot of things until we are dealing with it at, uh, uh, the, at the mid-year, midpoint of the year. But this is not one of those things. This is one thing that's just taking money from one place and it's already budgeted with <clears throat> department. So I would urge us not to um, create another problem with our employees and go ahead and approve this. And then um, when this comes up again, let's not um, uh, be disingenuous then or um, hypocritical and say one thing this time and then do something another time. Uh, Commissioner Wynn got you next. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It just so happens that after we voted last, we discussed this last week, I found out some information. It doesn't matter that this money was already in the budget to me. That, that, that's, that's not the issue here. Yes, I have a chunk of a raise for somebody when the other people, my understanding is the other people in that same court don't, haven't gotten a raise in four years. And, and Commissioner Allen made the comment, we, we have, we've got a pay scale study that's probably going to be coming out any day now. I'm keep waiting to see it. Uh, Dr. Moffat keeps saying it's out there, but I haven't seen it yet. And it should be out there and in place by this January 1. So this may throw this person's position off the pay scale that it's already been uh, aligned up for. And so this, this may say that she doesn't even deserve that amount of money. And we've already given her that amount of money. She may be above the pay scale that's being recommended. But I think that this oh. money would be well spent in the same budget for the employees that are working there just as hard if not harder in some cases, I don't know them, but to give one person over 16, I've never, I'm sorry, maybe y'all work in different jobs, but I've never gotten a raise over $16,000 one time. That, right, I, let me, I, let me, if I'm, let, if, I if I may, let me, I probably let me take, a lot harder than anybody. Including let me you. take, let me take the a, a, a privilege of the chair and, and tell you what I think I heard. And I'll ask Chairman Watkins to, to chime in on me. What we heard, and, and Duke, you may listen, need to listen to this pretty carefully. What we heard was that the clerk of the Superior Court is one of four constitutional officers. And once is appropriated to the office of the Superior Court clerk or the sheriff or the tax commissioner or the probate judge, once we appropriate money to them, they can move it as they see fit because they are one of four constitutional officers. What we ran into here is that there is a bookkeeping regulation in our code that prohibits the finance director from physically or moving the money on the budget allocation if it's in excess of $10,000 unless there's commission approval. So 
nobody nobody <laughs> is is disputing the the authority of a constitutional officer to spend the money appropriated to her office as she sees fit whether we like it or not she can do that really what we were voting on is whether or not to give the pool finance officer christy Lucci the authority to move the money when the regulation says she can't without our permission so it's a slightly different question so you're not really approving the pay raise you got that she she's entitled to do that herself and i'll call on the, the county attorney to say just how wrong or how right i am when i say this uh, mr mayor if i could chime in please i hadn't had opportunity to say anything Oh, hold but, on. Um, okay, I'll get to you after I get to uh, county attorney. Then you get the benefit of his advice too. Duke, <laughs> did I misstate anything? Um, yes or no? I, I, <laughs> yeah. Yes, right. Yeah. No, he he's that is correct statement of law. The uh, constitutional uh, law, yeah. law officer, um, the commission appropriates the total budget to give to the constitutional officer, who then can spend. Uh, how that constitution, constitutional law wants. This ordinance is true. We also have a separate because we bookkeep for the constitutional officers. They don't do their own bookkeeping. They don't do their own, you know, keep keeping track of their budgeting process the way we do. And so they basically contract with us to keep up with it. We require when there's a change like this for the finance department to have an ordinance that authorizes inner budget changes. So here, we've already appropriated the $16,283, and it's an aligned item budget, budget for the Superior Court clerk. She can spend it how she wants. This ordinance would simply put it into, for our purposes, these other categories. That is the correct legal statement. Okay. So now, Mayor Pro Tem, tell me you were next, and then Commissioner Wynn. Mayor Pro Tem? Uh, Yes, sir. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen, uh, you know, I, I, I certainly hope Attorney Duke Brewer will stay around with us in 2021. Because <laughs> I, I mean, boy, he, 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 he sharp as a tech. And that's not to take away from anybody else. Uh, what, what's interesting about this is uh, when we start saying her and him, let me tell y'all something. I saw the same trolling on social media about this pay that y'all saw. Okay. In 2016, um, I think we all were here when the mayor graciously gave members of his staff up to 30,000 in raises. What? What? <laughs> you for <laughs> what? You know, it's been four years. We might have to remind you. I can take you back and let you see. <laughs> I, have no, I have no clue what you're talking about. When that budget, when that budget changed in 2016, uh, when that budget changed in 2016, a lot of staff members now got some significant amounts of raises. We had some judges come over and want us to correct their pensions and all that stuff. So, so listen, now, we can't keep talking about we want to give people a pay scale and take care of our employees. And then we pick and choose which ones we want to take care of. Yeah. Now, if y'all want to go with me, let's take all this $8 million and let's give our employees a nice, another Christmas bonus and some yeah. business folks now. Yeah. You know, so so we want to do it like that and, and let's just wait to get in trouble with the governor. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, y'all, what y'all overlooking the fact that it was me as the mayor that said I'd, I'd agree and they're going to come looking for me. I need to wind up my term of office and start another term in the state penitentiary. Hey, hey. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that now. Let's get back. Let's get back to the issue. Let's get back to the issue at hand. You need a mask in there too. No, no, no. <laughs> you will definitely need a mask. Yeah. yeah all right. All right. All right. All right. So, so let, let's get back to the issue at hand, which, which is this this raise of the constitutional officer, and and at the at the risk of overstating this, I don't think you want to pick a fight with a constitutional officer. I don't. I don't think you want to do that. She, she is, according to everything I understand, authorized and allowed to move money around in her budget. Uh, Commissioner Watkins, Chairman Watkins, is that your recollection of what, what we learned at your committee meeting? Yeah, I mean, I think what you, uh, you the mayor and a 
fraternity do groove mentioned earlier is, is the understanding that I have as well. It's not a, uh, that's what, yeah, yeah. the constitution <laughs> officer seems to have some rights and I guess voters will take it up with them if they don't like what's happening in superior court. That's part of the rights I understand as a um, constitutional officer. She plans on making these changes without going over the general budget. This is a change from one line item to the other. The merits of the amount of the increase apparently isn't exactly for us to decide in this in this sense. Let me, let me, uh, Commissioner, and let I'm me sorry. say one more thing because I think this is important because I, I was asked to give that opinion. Um, that doesn't mean this commission can't appropriate an amount of money through a budgeting process for next year, for example, how it wants for the uh, clerk of superior court or any other constitutional officer. That's your ultimate control is you can, you have control over the purse. Once you give them the amount of money, they can move it around within within their discretion. So you're right, you're right, Duke, on that. But it's, it comes back to us. Yes. Or whoever's here next year, uh, yeah, they'll be able to handle the money they want to and give us what they need. All right, Com Commissioner Wynn, then Commissioner Jones. And I'll try to be through after this, but I, I already, I know what you're saying that she has the, the, the judge has the right to do what she wants with the money budgeted to her court. I realize that you don't have to go through that explanation, Duke or Mr. Mayor. <laughs> but, but and I have a right to an opinion, just like Commissioner Allen. I think that's a huge raise. I mean, she wouldn't even had to have come to us to discuss this if she had kept it right. 10 or less, but she did. She wanted to give the whole 16 to one person, 16 plus. I still think that's a huge amount of money and it may throw her position out of whack on the pay scale that we are going to have pretty soon, I hope. I just think that it's a lot of money and if I worked in that department, I'd be asking other employees see that and hear that and they all know about it now. Uh, wondering if they, they are just not worthy enough to get any money out of that themselves. But yeah, you're right, we can change, we can do something with the budget next time. Yeah, Commissioner Jones, Commissioner Jones got you next, sir. Yes, sir. I, I know it's because it's more than ten thousand dollars. But if in fact uh, it's not up to us and it's up to, it's up to them and they have sole discretion as to how it's spent, then why the heck is it on our agenda? Shouldn't even be here. Because it's over but, ten. But, I know. But, it's right. Over, because, because, over ten thousand. Yeah, right. The, uh, the the pool the pool the pool uh, uh, finance officer uh, finance director is caught between a rock and a hard place. She, She's right. our regulations prohibit her from <coughs> moving money and transferring line items and and thought, above ten thousand dollars. I thought we changed that ten thousand dollar rule a while back anyway. Nope. Apparently not. Apparently is not, there, is there is there further discussion, y'all? If not, those in favor of the ordinance would vote yes and, and those opposed would vote no. So all those in favor of the ordinance signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. 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 Got two no's. Three no's. Three no, got three got three three no's. Al, Alan uh, 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 Jones and Wynn. Uh, so the eyes have it six to three and the ordinance is adopted. Uh, that takes us hallelujah, praise the Lord. That takes us to new business. And and new business, I got just a few items to read just so we'll have them and you know kind of what's coming next week. Uh, the, the first uh, item of new business is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute a lease agreement between Macon, Bibb County, and James Hatcher doing business as Hatcher Farms for the lease of approximately 184.48 acres of clear zone land within the Middle Georgia Regional Airport to be used as agriculture land in substantially the same form as attached here, too. I'm going to make a change there and refer that to facilities and engineering. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please make that as a note? Uh, rather than operations and finance, which is what's in the agenda. So that's going to facilities and engineering. Item B is an ordinance to approve and authorize the appropriation of up to $40,000 from 2018 plus revenues uh, and uh, calendar year 2017 Walker Road landfill purchase line item to provide funding for professional services and preparation for closing the Walker Road landfill. I'm going to refer that to the operations and finance committee because that's the contract amount for that. Uh, item C is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement of extension with the Houston County uh, Board of Health WIC program uh, for the lease of office space at 456 Oglethorpe Street in the amount of $21,215 uh, 
for one year. Uh, I actually think I'm going to refer that to the operation. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm going to refer that to facilities and engineering as well. So you got a, a, a two, two leases with that one going to facilities and engineering. Uh, next is uh, item D is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute a lease agreement with AT Holt at a rate of $350 per month for the use of a vacant lot located on Walnut Street Lane alongside the courthouse be used for authorized county parking. I'm going to refer that to operations and finance uh, committee. <laughs> uh, item E is a resolution to authorize the mayor to execute a purchase and sale agreement with Wade Ford in the amount of $137,856 for the purchase of four Ford Explorer Pursuit Unit uh, utility vehicles with funds to be paid for by the 2018 SPLOSS Funds Public Safety Fire Upgrade Machinery and Equipment line item. I'm gonna refer that to the Operations and Finance Committee. Item F is an ordinance to approve and authorize the reappropriation of up to $200,000 from the 2018 SPLOSS revenues Calendar year 2019, roads and bridges, Central City Commons line item to provide funding for planned improvements to Cotton Avenue Plaza, First Street, and Rosa Park Square. I'm going to refer that to the Committee of the Whole. Uh, item G is a, a resolution of approving the temporary expansion of Macon Bibb County's first Friday open container uh, authorizations in the downtown business area through December the 31st of 2020. Uh, I'm going to refer that. I think I'm going to refer that to economic and community development. Yay. <laughs> Yay. I'm, I'm trying. All right. So you can uh, see what you think of, of uh, first, first Friday every night uh, is what I understand. So that's oh. economic, and economic and community development. Um, and that's all the new business thus far but 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 watch watch your agenda coming out friday afternoon uh to see if there's anything additional and we'll meet and discuss this next tuesday uh the 11th uh, of august beginning at nine o'clock by zoom uh <coughs> and also please remember we're gonna have the public hearing the third and final public hearing at one o'clock and then a special call <coughs> meeting of the bibb county commission to adopt the millage rate uh at one o'clock or as soon thereafter we get through with that where do we come get our lunch? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We, 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 uh, <clears throat> Michael, do we have any non-agenda comments before we adjourn? Yes, uh, Mayor, we've got several. Oh, boy. Um. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, you only thought that, we were through. Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm paying rapt attention. Uh, I are really these am. the one he personally picked um, out? Or did, or, did, or did we do it? Don't we put it in the head? How are we doing? So we, we received... Uh, five comments about the tennis program. And I was gonna ask the mayor, do you want me to read all five or do you want me to just read the first three that came in? I'm gonna read all five. Yeah. Well, depending on how long, don't read more, don't okay. read more than three minutes worth okay. of that, any one of them. Okay. And then we, we had two more that were on other topics. Um, all right. So there's seven comments total that we received. Um, the first comment came from uh, Carrie Inglesby. Uh, and I'll do all the tennis ones first. Um, this says, uh, hello, I'm emailing you all to let you know my daughters, eight and 12, have thoroughly enjoyed Agape tennis camps this summer. We were previously involved in after school tennis programs at Alex Two and John Drew for about three years. If it was not for these after school programs, my girls would not know and love this sport. It has also provided a much needed after school option that taught a great sport and allowed for homework to be done. As a single working mom with three little girls, the after-school program was invaluable to my family. Though it ended in December, I would love to see Agape offer this again if feasible. Initially, I was nervous about the change to Agape in late spring, but my girls went to camp this summer and had a blast. They're extremely well run and the coaches are great. We will continue to take advantage of Agape tennis programs this year. We are among the Macon families that would not have been exposed to tennis without summer and holiday camps and after-school tennis and we are grateful that they are offered. We appreciate the staff at all of the tennis centers, both the staff that has been there for a while and all of the new Agape staff. Also, the work Agape is doing to provide scholarships for campers is really great, and I hope that grows as Agape Tennis grows. <coughs> Thank you. Signed, Carrie Inglesby. Uh, the second comment that we received was from uh, Hannah Smith, and it says, hello, my name is Hannah Smith, age 14. I started taking tennis lessons at JDS in the third grade. 
Since then, I attended tennis camps, after school tennis programs, participated in drills, played in tournaments. I love tennis. It helps me stay fit, focus more when I'm in school and enjoy myself. I've had great coaches along the way. Coach Haj, Emmanuel, Lubos, and Bobby, to name the few. They've taught me discipline and to enable me to improve my skills and win many tournaments. My coach is now Jassy Winterspoon, JC, uh, Witherspoon, I'm sorry, JC. She is a great teacher. She is full of energy and keeps us engaged, always giving feedback. My plans are to continue participating in tennis programs at the center and in high school. My goal is to play enough to get a scholarship to college. Sincerely, Hannah Smith. The third comment came from um, Betsy Fitzgerald, and she wrote a letter on behalf of Big Brothers Big Sisters Heart of Georgia. So she writes, um, good afternoon. I'm writing this letter in support for Agape Tennis Academy on behalf of Big Brothers Big Sisters of the Heart of Georgia. This spring, Big Brother Big Sisters and Agape Tennis Academy created a partnership that allowed our at-risk youth to be exposed to tennis through their summer tennis program. For most of our youth, they had never touched a tennis racket before attending the program, and many had never even watched it being played in person or on TV. Through their generosity, our youth were able to attend weekly sessions at no cost to the parent. Our parents would never have been able to afford for their children to attend this program without the support of Agape. The youth that attended programs this summer, which ranged from elementary to high school age students, had a great time. Their feedback we received from them, parents and their mentors, was that they had fun making friends, learning how to play tennis and pickleball, and of course they loved the end of the day water balloon fights to cool off. We also found that the program sparked great interest among several students who now wish to continue learning and playing. Parents also expressed their gratitude that this was a safe alternative for their children's original summer plan. Many of our parents who live at or below the poverty line utilize public school summer education opportunities and the boys and girls clubs during summer months Unfortunately, COVID-19 caused the cancellation of these programs, leaving many younger students unsupervised at home. Amy Pazahanik and her staff are extremely professional and have been great partners with my staff. I commend their flexibility and professionalism during a public health crisis in addition to their program organization and execution. In my career, I have worked with numerous partners and this has been one of the most uncomplicated and stress-free experiences. As a Make and Bib resident and taxpayer, I'm so grateful that we have opportunities like this for the youth of our community. Thank you for selecting a high quality tennis organization to serve our tennis needs in Make and Bib. We're receiving big city opportunities and services in our own community. What a great asset. Sincerely, Betsy Fitzgerald, President and CEO. The um, fourth comment comes from Jessica Barba and it's, it reads, Hi, I just wanted to drop a quick note and say how wonderful Agape Tennis Academy has been through this tough year 2020. They have offered numerous programs and lessons and drills available to many different groups and levels of players. I love that I can always count on the, this academy to have some sort of activity going on any day of the week and that I can easily drop in and attend. It has been such a great stress relief for my family and I. Hope that Agape can continue to support the community in such ways. Thanks, Jessica Templeton. Um, the last comment on tennis comes from Tashelga Parrott, and she writes, hello, I'm writing to express my great pleasure in making Bibb County recreation. My husband and I love Agape Tennis Academy summer camp for our youngest uh, daughters, ages 10 and 13. My husband Damien and I attended intermediate adult drills several times each week. We have all learned more about this courtesy sport this summer than the previous two years of our interest and involvement in the tennis community. Thank you for making active family enrichment a priority for our country. Sincerely, to Shelga Parrott. And um, there were two more uh, comments that we received. One, the next one was from Gary Marion, and he writes in about the St. Rest Cemetery. He says, um, my name is Gary W. Marion, and I am the disabled vet whose grandfather's gravesite cannot be located at St. Rest Cemetery in Macon, Georgia. Unfortunately, I'm not the only one whose relative cannot be located because of the condition of the entire cemetery. I'm requesting that an amendment be made in order to change the laws regarding privately owned cemeteries being held responsible for the condition of their property. This property has been abandoned for decades. Thank you for your kind attention regarding this matter. 
I hope to hear from you soon with an update. And then the final comment we received was from Veronica Spann. Um, and the, the subject line says, uh, Making Bib 2020, Watkins completing Cotton Avenue. She writes, hello, my fellow commissioners. First of all, I wanna thank you for all that you do for our community. However, there are some concerns from citizens of West Bibb and other surrounding districts. As you know, we're not able to participate in the meetings during this time because of COVID-19. The concerns that we have are as follows. One, the rebuilding of Rosa Park Square. The monies that are allocated for this project is unreal, three million. I have read all of the information in Commissioner Watkins reference for the Cotton Avenue monument to be removed and placed at Whittle Park. This is a wonderful decision and we want to see it gone. However, we do not believe that a water wall and stage area is necessary. There are several stage areas at Coleman Hill and other parks in this community that are not being used. We do not want another location where the homeless people are stretched out downtown Macon. The water wall is a very costly expense. Who will maintain the water wall? As you know, we have several fountains downtown. One waterfall that goes from Hollingsworth Park to Addison Tinsley Park, it was beautiful, yet it is dry and full of debris. The water fountain music note is in horrible condition. It used to be beautiful. The stream waterfall located near the Douglas Theater is full of algae. We would like for you all to take a walk downtown and look at these water fountains. Monies that you have all, all have allocated for the water wall can go elsewhere where it is much needed. Who will maintain the water wall? Who's maintaining what we have now? I will tell you no one. Two, we highly recommend that all city employees that have not had a raise in over five years that some of these monies, if allowable, should be allocated for city employees. Just maybe they will care about keeping these areas clean downtown. Many employees have left to go get better jobs. We have trained them and had to lose them because we do not want to pay them enough money. They have to provide for their families, pay for college, pay a mortgage or rent. Can you please put yourself in their shoes and ask yourself these questions? If you are working for someone else, how would you feel if you had not received a raise in five years? Would you feel unappreciated? Would you care about your job? Would you give 100%? Number three, we highly recommend cameras in areas where there is high crime in this community. There are several unsolved crimes. If we had cameras in these areas, this could curve some of the crime. As you know, people will not talk because they're afraid for their lives. We need cameras in South Macon from Mercer University crossing Pinono to Vineville Avenue to Rocky Creek Road to Eisenhower Parkway to Williamson Road. These areas have the most crime. If cameras were there, do you realize how many unsolved crimes would be solved? We need you all to feel the pain, feel the suffering from the people in this community that want to feel safe in their homes. We need you all to distribute money evenly throughout this community, not just downtown Mercer and North Macon. It's not fair and enough is enough. We would like for you all to allocate 1.1 million that had been previously earmarked for infrastructure improvements in the Central City Commons project to those three areas. So we as a people ask that you all rethink some of your plans that you have for Rosa Parks Square and Cotton Avenue Plaza. Think about this. Do we really need a roundabout downtown? It really flows very peacefully. The layout of our downtown area is wonderful. When I'm showing customers and clients from out of state, our city, I take them downtown and sell them on our history. They love it. The news really does a bad job on reporting all of the crime in our city. I have to answer the question when they ask me about the crime here as truthfully as I can. By saying there is crime everywhere, our city is pretty safe. Um, so please rethink this $5 million project. Scale back to $3 million and take the other $2 million and allocate those funds to much needed areas in our city. Nevertheless, some of these things can be completed by city workers and that will help scale back on some of the cost. And what's the, the name of the company that's supposedly doing the work and who owns it? Are you all allowing minorities to bid on some of the infrastructure improvements? Moreover, I wanna thank you all and the mayor for such a wonderful job you're doing. Keep up the good work, but please rethink the $5 million. Thank you in advance, signed Veronica Spann. Mr. Mayor, that concludes the um, public comments on non-agenda items that we received. And I'll uh, remind the public again that we have a website set up at makeandbib.us where you can submit comments to the clerk of commission or comments can be emailed up to noon um, before the day of the meetings to commission at makeandbib.us to be read in commission meetings.
my thank thank you very much for your efforts to to uh, allow uh, citizen participation even in these Zoom meetings. Uh, got the one point of personal privilege requested by Commissioner Lucas. Um, yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, something that I want to share um, with my fellow commissioners. As you all know, just recently I've had a couple of complaints. Complaints that were filed against me. And of course, um, I, I think that they are frivolous and I think we'll eventually end up proving that. But I just want to remind each of you as an elected official that you are also subject to have uh, frivolous complaints filed against you at any time. Uh, that someone might not like what you say or whatever. And so I would just like for you to be thinking about the law that's in place, what we have as far as ethics legislation, which really deals with uh, corruption. It does not deal with your personal life. It deals with corruption. But the, the problem that I see is if someone decides that they are going to target you and they're going to... Um, uh, to submit uh, complaint after complaint after complaint, then you are going to have to respond to those complaints. And you might think, well, oh, well, that's not going to happen to me. Well, you, you think that way until it does happen to you. Because as I said earlier, everybody does not love you all, just like everybody does not love me, nor do they all love the mayor. And anybody who gets mad can file a complaint on you. There is a form that's available. There's one that's being circulated actively in the community. So if anybody doesn't like you or they don't like what you said or how you voted, they can come up with something to file a uh, complaint, even though it may be frivolous. So what I am asking our uh, all of us to look at and ask the legal department to look at is coming up with something that will that uh, elected officials can use in the case that there are frivolous complaints and it can be shown that there is a concerted effort and organized effort to try and discredit a public official or to just load them up and, and divert their time away from their duties as an elected official, that that elected official could have some recourse. And I'm talking about filing a counter um, uh, complaint and recover damages from these folks that engage in these concerted efforts to uh, disrespect and to divert uh, elected officials from their duties. So this is just something that I want you to think about because it's me today, but it could be you tomorrow. And believe me, I have heard that there are some people who are considering filing some complaints against some of you. So please take it under consideration and Let's look at putting something in place that will protect us against frivolous uh, complaints and maybe stop some of these people from doing stuff that's dishonest. Thank, Thank you, Commissioner Lucas. Uh, uh, one, one point of personal privilege from me, please, is to remind you that the long awaited ribbon cutting on the Second Street connector bridge over the railroad track will be at 9 30 Friday morning. Uh, we have we have invited uh, President Underwood. I hope he'll be able to to be there for the ribbon cutting. Uh, this is the the uh, connection between Little Richard Peniman and Second Street over the railroad tracks. There, the long long awaited ribbon cutting at nine thirty Friday morning. I think you'll want to be there. It's going to be the start of something really really big in the community. Uh, is there anything else to come before us? Can we schedule it at ten thirty? No, it's too hot at 1030. <laughs> we, they, they, they've already asked and put out the invitation at 930 so we can avoid uh, some of the heat. Quickly, quickly sir. Just want to yes, say. Sir, uh,
you just want to say happy birthday to uh, Meghan Merkel, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, Billy Joe Thornton, and President uh, Obama. Happy right, birthday. Obama. Everybody. Very Obama. good indeed. All right. All, All right. With no, uh, no other points of personal privilege requested uh, in reaching the end of our agenda, can I get a motion to adjourn? Good night. <laughs> and without objection, we are adjourned.